these are the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of trigonometry. So first, let's take a look at the uh, six trigonometric functions. Start with the three basic ones, which are sine, cosine, and tangent. And the first way you want to think about these is the ratio of two sides of a right triangle. So sine, you can see, is the opposite, the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So an easy way to remember those is the acronym SOCOTOA, where S here stands for sine. And you can see it's the opposite, always stands for the opposite, over the hypotenuse. I wrote it vertically here, so you can see it's actually over it. So that's the first part. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Then the C stands for cosine. Cosine. Now we abbreviate these with three letters, but this is how they're really spelled out here. Cosine is the A stands for adjacent over the hypotenuse again. And finally, the TOA part stands, T stands for tangent. You know, we abbreviate tangent with three letters, but it's spelled out like that. Tangent is the O stands for opposite. And then the other three trig functions are just the reciprocals of the first three. So cosecant is one over sine, cosecant theta is one over sine theta. So the reciprocal of it, so that means another way of looking at cosecant with the sides of the triangle means it's the hypotenuse over the opposite. Similarly, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And finally, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Since tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. So these represent the six possible ways you can take the ratio of two sides of a right triangle. So as long as you can remember how to called Sokotoa, and just remember which ones match up with which, that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, then it makes these much more manageable than it And then some basic trig identities. Tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. That's one part we'll use more than any other, sine over cosine. And you can see that why that would work, because tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. And if you took sine over cosine, look what would happen. Sine theta over cosine theta. See, sine theta, remember we said is the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And if we simplify that, just dividing two fractions here. That's really the same as the opposite over the hypotenuse. But when you divide by a fraction, remember it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you multiply by the reciprocal, which is hypotenuse over adjacent. You can see then the hypotenuses would reduce out, leaving you with the opposite over the adjacent. But remember, opposite over adjacent, that's tangent. So that's why sine over cosine, in case you didn't know, is the same as tangent. And similarly, since cotangent is the reciprocal, one way of looking at it is it's adjacent over opposite. But since tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent would be the reciprocal, would be cosine over sine, in a similar way. And then some of the Pythagorean identities, sine squared plus cosine squared is one, tangent squared plus one is secant squared, and cotangent squared plus one equals secant squared. And these all come <coughs> from the Pythagorean theorem combined with these trig functions. And then the symmetry identities, these are just saying based on the graph which ones are odd and which ones are even, right? So this is saying if you plug a negative x in for x into sine, it equals the opposite of sine. And that's because the graph of sine is an odd function. 
So when you plug in the opposite x coordinate, here's x, here's negative x, you get a y coordinate the opposite because it's odd, an odd function. However, cosine, when you plug in negative x the opposite, you still get the same thing, cosine, because cosine, if you look at this graph, is an even function. Remember, the graph of cosine looks something like this. Turns up here to 0, 1, right down. So it's enough about the y axis. You can see if you plug in x versus negative x, you're going to get the exact same y coordinate this even. And finally, tangent, like sine, is an odd function. graph tangent looks something like this. And it's got asymptotes there. Negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So you can see again if you plug in x versus negative x, it's going to be the opposite. Just like sine. And notice I didn't put the other three trick functions because if you remember these three, just looking at their graphs, the other three are the same. Um, they match up with the one that we're reciprocal of. So, first, cosecant and cotangent. Other circles of sine and tangent, so those are also odd. And it would have properties similar to sine and tangent. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's also an even graph similar to cosine. All right, now. There's different ways of evaluating trig functions and solving trig equations. You may have learned it a different way, but I think, at least for me, the easiest way is to just remember the two special triangles that you'll need to know. So the two special triangles you need to know are the 30-60-90 and the 45-45-90. So on this one, if this is 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and here's our right angle here, 90 degrees. Then the side, the basic sides of this, the smallest side across from the 30 degree angle is 1. The next smallest side across from the 60 degree angle is root square root of 3. And the longest side in the right triangle of the hypotenuse is 2. And recall for radians, and we'll primarily be working in radians, remember 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6, and 60 degrees is the same as pi over 3. Easy way to remember that, I think, is, well, how do these relate? 30 degrees and 60 degrees? 60 degrees is twice as much as 30 degrees, right? And if you multiply 2 times pi over 6, you get 2 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 3. So you get pi over 3 is twice as much as pi over 6, just like a third is twice as much as a sixth. And the other uh, basic triangle you need to know, a special triangle, is the 45-45 value. This one's even easier. So this is 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and the basic sides of the triangle. In this case, the angles are the same, so the opposite sides of the legs here are both 1, and the hypotenuse is root 2. So if you just memorize, commit those two special triangles in memory, that will make it a lot easier to handle these trig problems without your calculator. So you want to make sure you can do these without uh, being dependent upon your calculator. Solve. So 45 degrees, remember, is the same as pi over 4. So let's see what that looks like on the traditional unit circle, first of all. And coterminal angles, just remember, mean angles that have the same place in the circle have the same values for all the trig functions. So just to refresh your memory on this, remember 0 starts right there always. But then there's two directions you can go. One you're probably most familiar with is when you go counterclockwise like this, that's the positive direction on the circle. And remember, all the way around is two, well, let's look at it in degrees, first of all. Right, so that's zero. When you go all the way around, you end up at 360 degrees. Half of 360, 180 degrees, you go halfway around. Half of 80. 90 degrees, and you add another 90 to 180, you get 270 degrees. 
Okay, so that's in degrees. That's typically a little easier for people to start with under terms of understanding it. But again, we're going to primarily deal with radians, and 2 pi represents the same as 360. So you could convert these every time using the ratio 2 pi over 360 or 360 over 2 pi, but that can be more time consuming than you probably want to use. So, well, just first remember where this 2 pi comes from. It's just not some random number they chose. It comes from the fact that the circumference of a circle, remember, is 2 pi times the radius. So this is called the unit circle because its radius is one unit. So if you plug in one there, you get a circumference of 2 pi, which represents all the way around the circle. So that's where radians come from there, the circumference form. So we still start at zero, whether this is radians or degrees. But then when we're dealing with radians, uh, 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees. And what's half of 2 pi? Well, that would just be pi. So pi over here is the same as 180 degrees. Half of pi, we could write it as pi over 2. And you can see half of 90 degrees is 45 degrees, and half of pi over 2 is pi over 4, which is why 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4 radius. And then if we look at it here, this is half of pi, 1 pi, this would be like 1 and a half pi, which is the same as 3 half, so 3 pi over 2. And it just keeps going. Keeps going. You can go past 360 or 2 pi, and you just keep, keep adding 90 degrees or pi over 2, depending on how far you go. Uh, keep circling around. The other way, though, you can also go in the negative direction. So the negative direction, this one is the one that goes clockwise. Again, zeros is still right here. And degrees, this would be negative 360 if you go all the way around. It's longer. Right here would be negative 90 degrees negative 180 degrees, and negative 270 degrees, and then negative 360. And in radians, this would be negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. So we go in the negative direction. And again, you can keep going past that in the negative direction. So you want to keep that in mind when you're trying to evaluate trig functions or solve trig equations. Now that's the traditional unit circle, and that's what I think is easiest to use when you're evaluating a trig function at one of these four points here. Because all you have to do is draw the circle there. And it's, remember, it's a unit circle, meaning the radius is one. So the one each direction there. Right? circle, unit circle. And so if you're at one of these four points right on the axis there, 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 or there, the easiest way to figure out any of the trig functions is just looking at the coordinates of those points. So the coordinates of this point right here, x coordinates 1, y coordinates 0. This point right here is 0 for the x, 1 for the y, 0, 1. This one is negative 1, 0. And this point is 0, negative 1. So if you're at any of those four points, then all you have to remember with that is cosine corresponds to the x coordinate. So here the x coordinate is 1, cosine would equal 1, here cosine equals 0, cosine would equal negative 1, and cosine would equal 0. And sine corresponds to the y coordinate. So your sine would be the y coordinate 0, your sine would be 1, your sine would be 0, your sine would be negative 1. And then remember for tangent, remember we saw our identities back here, that tangent is the same as sine over cosine. And since sine is the y coordinate and cosine is the x coordinate, and it's going to be sine, which is the y coordinate, over the x coordinate. So, right here, 
tangent, 0 is the y coordinate, 1 is the x coordinate, 0 divided by 1 is just 1. Similarly here, 0 divided by negative 1 is, sorry, 0 divided by 1 is 0, I guess it's 1 actually, and 0 divided by negative 1 is also 0. So tangent is 0 at those points on the inner circle. However, here, if you, you take sine over cosine of 1 divided by 0, or here, negative 1 divided by 0, remember you can't divide by 0, that's called undefined. And that's why, when we go back to our graph of tangent, at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, tangent has vertical asymptotes. Because at these places, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, tangent is undefined. Now that's what's usually easiest to use when you are evaluating a trig function at one of those four points. However, if you're evaluating a trig function in between those four points somewhere, then I think it's personally easiest to use one of what I call the bow tie triangles. If you don't like doing it this way, this is not the only way to do it, you can use the unit circle if you have it memorized. Okay? If you have the unit circle memorized, you can also do it that way. But I find a lot of people memorize it temporarily and then they forget it, or they're always looking back at it and not, never really had it memorized, so that's not helpful when it comes to calculus because you do need to be able to evaluate it without any notes or um, looking at um, a calculator. So let me show you what I mean by the bow tie triangles if you haven't seen this method before. It involves just, just knowing these two triangles. The only ones you're going to be asked about to, to evaluate without a calculator or involve either the 30-60-90 triangle or the 45-45-90 triangle. So here's your x and y axis again, or on the unit circle, I should say. This is where you're at here. So the bow tie triangles, these can be either 30-60-90 triangles or 45-45-90 triangles. And the 30-60-90, the interior angle on each of them, can either be 30 or 60. Right? So these are not intended to be drawn to scale. Mine probably would go more like 45-45-90 triangles. And the right angle you can see is right here on these. Okay. And I call them the bow tie triangles to remind you that the angle you're looking at is right in here. Not the angles out here, but right in here. And that kind of makes it look like a bow tie, I guess. That looks like the knot of the bow tie. So that ends up my name from bow tie triangles. So if you're at one of these or places you use the unit circle, but if you're not, you'll use either the 30-60-90 or the 45-45-90 triangle and draw it in the appropriate quadrant. And when you do that, then you just have to think of this as like an x and y axis here to see where everything's positive or negative. So if you're in the first quadrant, well, everything's positive here, right? The x coordinate's positive, which is this side. The y coordinate is also positive. If you're in the fourth quadrant here, the x coordinate is still positive, but the y coordinate is negative. If you're over here in the second quadrant, the x coordinate is negative, the y coordinate is positive. And if you're in the uh, third quadrant here, then the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is also negative. And then the hypotenuse is not really an x or a y coordinate, so that's a link. So no matter what quadrant you're in, you always treat the hypotenuse. As negative. That's the easiest way to, I think, to see which whether the sides are going to be treated as positive or negative. If you're using a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. Another way to kind of check yourself, you might have learned, or not, this can be a little helpful too, is a little acronym device here that all students, starting with the first quarter, take calculus. And what that means is where, which trig functions are positive here. S is for all of them are positive. Here sine is positive, including its reciprocal cosecant. Here tangent is the only one that's positive, including cotangent, its reciprocal. And here cosine in the fourth quadrant is the only one that's positive, including its reciprocal cosecant. And you can see that here. It'll all be positive here. Do it just as a second quadrant, you can see sine would be the opposite over hypotenuse, making it positive. Uh, but all the other ones would involve the adjacent tangent and cosine, so those would be negative, and so on through the other quadrants as well. 
All right, now that we've got to the kind of basics here, let's look and see how this works with specific angles here. So if we want to find the values of the six trigonometric functions for the given angle theta, so here we've got 5 pi over 3. Let's first figure out where that is on the unit circle. So, well, we know zero is right here, and it's positive, so we're going in this direction. Around the circle. Now, what I think is the easiest way, at least for me, to figure out where these are, which quadrant they're in, or if they're right on the axis here. You can see it's not on the axis because it's over three. Um, is to just think, well, this is pi here, right? And if we go around, this is two pi. However, if we convert these, because this is in terms of thirds to thirds, pi is the same if you multiply it by 3 over 3 as 3 thirds. Right? Isn't it the same as 1 pi? So 3 thirds is there. So that shows us if we were looking for 2 pi over 3, it would be in the second quadrant. And if we were looking for 4 pi over 3, it would be in the third quadrant. But we're not. We're looking for 5 pi over 3. And so we keep going, and we can see, well, 2 pi, if we multiply that by 3 over 3 also, to get a common number, is the same as 6 pi over 3. So now you can see, if it's 6 pi over 3, that would mean 5 pi over 3, since we're going around counterclockwise here, would be pi over 3 less than it, hence we'd end up in the fourth quadrant here. And see, so this would be 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 is right here, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. And if we want 7 pi over 3, that would be right up here. So that's how I find it easiest to figure out which quadrant is. And then, since this is 6 pi over 3, that means the angle inside here is pi over 3 less than it to give you 5 pi over 3. So this is, takes us to 5 pi over 3. And then you just have to remember the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remember, this is like pi over 3 is the same as 60 degrees. So the opposite side of that is... The side of that is negative 3. The reason why it's a negative, look, take a look, this is a, like a y coordinate, right? This would be negative down there. Root 3 is the side opposite of that. And hypotenuse, so we always treat as positive 2. And this side opposite, this would be the 30 degrees right here, the side opposite that would be 1. And that's positive because this is x direction. So with those three sides, we can figure out any of our trig functions. So let's start with, because remember we're looking at this as the angle right there. It's one of the bow tie triangles. So let's start with sine. Sine, since theta is called pi pi over theta, so it's sine of theta in this case, would equal opposite, remember so to opposite of hypotenuse, the opposite here is negative root 3, hypotenuse is 2. Then cosine of theta. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent here is 1, over the hypotenuse is 2. And then tangent of theta is the, you could do sine over cosine, or you could just do opposite over adjacent. Opposite is negative root 3 over 1, but really that's just negative root 3. Now let's take a look at the other, those are the three basic ones. The other three, which are just reciprocals of those. So now we can take reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So cosecant of theta would be 2 over negative root 3. If you think it's reciprocal. And negative can really go to numerator down there or out front. And then when you multiply the numerator and denominator by root 3 to simplify it, you get negative 2 root 3 over square root 3 times square root 3 is 3. I think that's a good thing. 2 root 3 over 3. Then reciprocal of cosine is secant. So that would be 2 over 1. And that's just 2. And the reciprocal tangent is cotangent, which would be the reciprocal to be 1 over negative 1 over negative 1 over 3. Again, if you simplify that to get rid of the radical denominator, 
rationalize it, you multiply it and down over by root 3, which gives you negative root 3 over square root 3 times square root 3. So there's all six trig functions evaluated at the angle of 5 pi over 3. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. So negative 3 pi over 2. Notice it's over 2. That's our clue there that it's not going to be a bow tie triangle here. First of all, we'll go in the negative direction. Here's 0. So counter, uh, sorry, clockwise this time. And remember, this is negative pi over 2, negative pi, so negative 3 pi over 2 is right here. And when you're right here, you can't really draw a triangle when you're on one point. So remember, at these points, it's even easier. You don't have to draw a triangle. All you have to do is look at the coordinates of that point, x coordinate 0, y coordinate 0. Well. So here we're using the traditional unit surface. And then again, let's find the value of all six trig functions. So sine. When you're at one of these points, remember is the y coordinate, which is just 1. Cosine is the x coordinate, which is 0. And tangent of theta is sine over cosine, 1 over 0, but you can't divide by 0 here. This is saying what times 0 gives you 1? Nothing. So that's why the answer here is undefined. Then so at the other way around, the reciprocals cosecant of theta, the reciprocal of sine. Well, if you take the reciprocal of 1, that's like 1 over 1, it's still going to be 1. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Well, 0 is kind of like 0 over 1, right? So if you take this reciprocal, it's 1 over 0, making secant undefined. Secant of negative 3 pi over 2. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Make sure you always indicate what angle it is. If you just write cotangent without the uh, angle there, then that is not correct. Okay? Always put the angle. We're using theta to because theta is negative 3 prime or 2. So reciprocal 1 over 0 is 0 over 1, but here that's okay. Let's say what times 1 gives you 0, that is 0. So those are the six trig functions evaluated at negative 3 prime or 2. All right, let's take a look at a couple more here. So we've got 7 pi over 6, all right? Let's figure out where that is in the unit circle, first of all. It's a positive angle, so starting with 0, we're going in a counterclockwise direction there. And again, then we know this is pi. Okay. But notice on this one, I like going over here. Here, I knew that our angle is 5 pi over 3, so I multiplied by 3 over 3 to see where it was. Here, our angle has a denominator of 6, so I'm going to multiply it by 6 over 6. So pi is the same. 6 pi over 6. Well, since that's 6 pi over 6, then in the second quadrant, this would be pi over 6 less than it, 5 pi over 6. And here, this would be pi over 6 more than it. So here is our 7 pi over 6 in the third quadrant. And the angle in here, our bow tie triangle, is pi over 6. So take 6 pi over 6 plus 1 more pi over 6, that gives us 7 pi over 6. So again, let's fill in the sides here. This is our 30, 60, 90, but remember, pi over 6 is like 30. So the opposite of it is 1. But you can see this is a negative y coordinate direction, so that's a negative 1. So I find this, we always treat as positive as 2. And our 60 degree angle is right here. The opposite of that is root 3. But again, this time it's in a negative x direction, so that's a negative root 3. So again, with those three sides of our triangle, we can evaluate all six trig functions. So let's start with sine of our angle theta, which is 7 pi over 6. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over 2. Negative 1. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is negative root 3 over the hypotenuse 2. And tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent, that's negative 1 over root negative root 3. So here you can see there's a couple things that happen. The negatives reduce out, and then if you root, rationalize it, multiply by root 3 over root 3, you get root 3 over square root 3 times square root 3 is 3, and the negatives reduce out, so it's just root 3. Now let's look at the ones that are reciprocals, just match them up again. 
set of a cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it would be 2 over negative 1, but that's just negative 2. Secant, it is the reciprocal of cosine, so that would be 2 over negative root 3. And again, if we rationalize it, multiply by root 3 over root 3. Get negative 2 root 3 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And finally, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Now, here you could use either form, but in this case, it's simplified. The unsimplified form is going to be easier to work with. So it'd be negative root 3 over negative 1, and negative is again reduced out, which is just square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. Okay, let's take a look at one more of these. We're applying all six trig functions. On a typical problem, you're not going to usually need all six trig functions, but if you can find all six, then you'll be set no matter which trig function you need to evaluate, you'll be able to evaluate it correctly. So we'll look at that on some of the next problems. All right. Let's find negative 5 power of 1. Okay. So back to the negative direction. There's 0. And negative 5 pi over 4. So, again, we know this is pi right here. Or in this case, negative pi. We're going in this direction. So what I'm going to do again is multiply. This time, look at the denominator. It's 4. Like here, I multiply by 6 over 6. Here, I'm going to multiply by 4 over 4. So this is the same as negative 4 pi over 4. Now, be careful, though. We're going in the negative direction. Right? So right here. This would actually be right here, negative 3 pi over 4, pi over, okay, and then negative 4 pi over 4, and then negative 5 pi over 4 would end up right here. Because we're going in the negative direction. Now, if it was positive 5 pi over 4, then it would end up in the third quadrant here instead. Okay, so again, let's look at our angle. The angle inside here is pi over 4, or 45 degrees. And then, remember the 45, 45-90 triangle, this one's probably the easiest to memorize. The sides are 1, 1, and root 2. Here's your right angle there. But let's say if it is negative. The hypotenuse is always positive, no matter which quadrant you're in. This is a positive y coordinate, but this one is a negative x coordinate. So again, now we're set to answer all, figure out all six straight functions. So let's start with sine. Sine of the angle theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over root 2, which if we simplify, multiply by root 2 over root 2, is this 4 to 2 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over root 2, which simplifies the same way, except that it ends up being negative, so negative root 2 over 2, we multiply the top numerator down there by radical 2. And finally, tangent of beta is the opposite over adjacent, so 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. And let's look at the other 3. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so instead of 1 over root 2, it's easy, easier to use the unsimplified form. That's root 2 over 1, which is square root of 2. Similarly, secant is just 2 over, sorry, negative, sorry, square root of 2 over negative 1, which is negative square root of 2. And finally, cotangent theta would be negative 1 over 1, which is also. So that's all six trig functions divided at negative 5 pi over 4. So again, to recap, if you're not in one of the uh, uh, four points here, then you use one of the bow tie triangles depending on which quadrant you're in. Fill in the sides and you're all set using Sokotoa to figure out all the trig functions. But if you are at one of the points, just use the coordinates. Like we did in the second right there. Okay. Now let's take a look at some, kind of putting this together, like a more um, realistic problem where you don't need all six trig functions here. So it says g of x equals this function, find g of 6. So 
first thing we do is plug in 6 for x, substitute in. And remember, when you see this, any kind of exponent on a trig function, what it really means is that whole thing is squared. So I'm going to rewrite this to what it really means is cosine, or plugging in 6 there for x, is that whole thing is squared. And then plus the sine of pi over 4, and then we're substituting 6 right there, so 6. All right, so the key here is first simplify it before you try to evaluate it. So we're not going to try to evaluate cosine of pi over 8 or sine of pi over 4 because that's not really the angle. So once we multiply by 6, they're going to be different. So we've got 6 pi over 8, and that reduces to 3 pi over 4. Don't forget that whole thing is squared. So we're not squaring the 3 pi over 4, we're squaring the, what the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is. Plus the sine. 6 pi over 4 reduces to 3 pi over 2. Okay. So let's figure out where these are again on a regular circle. So we've got to find where 3 pi over 4 is. It's positive, so here's 0. We're going in the positive direction. Here's pi. So since it's over 4, you multiply by 4 over 4. Let's see, pi is the same as 4 pi over 4, which means 3 pi over 4 would be right here, 5 pi over 4 would be here, but we want 3 pi over 4, so in this point right here. And 45, 45 degree triangle. It's 45 degrees, so you can see the sides here would be 1, 1, and root 2, what we just did actually. And then this side, this is the negative x coordinate, so it's negative, and then this positive line, the hypotenuse of this one. The g of 6 is equal. We just want the cosine, so we don't need all six of them, just one. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this angle, the adjacent is negative 1 over the hypotenuse. It's root 2, but don't forget that is squared. Plus the sine of 3 pi over 2. Notice that's not the same angle. This one's 3 pi over 4. So let's draw this one 3 pi over 2. Well, here's 0, and again, a positive angle, so we're going this direction. 3 pi over 2, remember, is right here. And there you're right at point and angle, uh, right on the axis, so you're not using a triangle here, you're just using the coordinates of this point, or 0, negative 1. And remember, sine is the y coordinate, which is negative 1, so this is actually plus or negative 1, or just minus 1. So there's no need to simplify it. It actually simplifies itself as you go. When you square this, negative 1 squared is just 1. Square to 2 squared is 2. And then minus 1. 1 half minus 2 halves gives you negative 1 half. So g of 6, negative 1 half. They don't always work out this nicely, but this one happens too. And, uh, all right, let's take a look at one more of these. This one just happens to have a different letter in there. You could have x, t, theta. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so this we're fine. here's f of t, find f of 10 pi. So f of 10 pi, wherever there's a t, we'd substitute in 10 pi, so that'd be sine 10 pi over 12, minus, again notice there's that exponent on the trig function. So that means the whole tangent is being cubed. Let's write it the way it really means here. So tangent tends pi over 10 pi replaces the t of 10 pi over 6, and then that whole thing again is cubed. So before we evaluate these, let's simplify these, let's reduce them if possible. So f of 10 pi, 10 pi over 12, and divide those by 2, 2 reduces to 5 pi over 6, minus Tangent of 10 pi over 6, you can divide those by 2. That reduces to 5 pi over 3. So again, we've got two different angles we have to look at. Let's start with 5 pi over 6. Here's 0. It's a positive angle, so we're going in this direction. This is pi. Our denominator is 6, so it's multiplied by 6 over 6. So that's 6 pi over 6. 
it's not six five or six, five five or six would be five or six less than it right here. And seven five or six if we need it would be right here. So there's our angle five five or six, that's like 30 degrees in there. So this side is one, two, and three, but it's a negative x torque. It's a negative. And we don't really need all sides, we just need the sides to figure out the sign. F of 10 pi. Oops. Sine of pi over, five, five over six. Sine is the opposite over that minus, so one over two, one half. Minus, now we have to figure out where five pi over three is. So here's zero. Positive direction, here's pi. Multiply by 3 over 3, that'd be 3 pi over 3. Well, 2 pi over 3 would be here, 4 pi over 3 would be here, but we want 5 pi over 3. So notice over here, this is 2 pi. But if you multiply that by 3 over 3, 2 pi is the same as 6 pi over 3. Which shows you that 5 pi over 3, going counterclockwise here, would be pi over 3 less than it would be right in this quadrant. And that's the same as 60 degrees. So our sides on our triangle would be root 3, but it's in a negative y direction, so negative root 3, 1, and a positive x direction, and that this is always positive 2. And we want the tangent of that angle. So the tangent is the opposite over adjacent, so that would be negative root 3 over 1. So f of 10 pi is 1 half, and then the negatives cancel out, so plus you can get a common number if you want to, we'll find this by 2 over 2, but it's not necessary here. Let me bring answer just like that. So that's how you evaluate trig functions and angles, which is a very important skill. It's equally important to be able to work in reverse, and it says here, find all the solutions to each equation for this interval. So all the x values between 0 and 2 pi, one time around the unit circle. So we're working in reverse. This time, we're trying to find what the angles are. The other problems we're given the angles are we're trying to evaluate the trig functions. So the first thing you can do to make this a lot easier, I think, is we'll recognize this means sine x is squared. So just pick a letter, I don't know, what do you want to use, like y or something, um, and set it equal to the trig function if it appears more than once. What should that do? So I'm going to let y equal sine of x. That way, that allows me to rewrite this as 2. Notice the 2 isn't being squared here, just the sine. So that's 2y squared plus y equals 1. And now let's pretend like we're just solving it for y. Because we are eventually going to want to plug in the sine x, but for now, next step would be to subtract the 1. Get it equal to 0. And then We've got a trinomial, so we want to factor it. So we want to look for factors of 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. The sum is coefficient of another term 1. So what would work there would be 2 and negative 1. And then we can use the, those two numbers to split up the middle term. So it would be 2y squared instead of y. We'll use those as the coefficients. That's 2y. And negative 1y. Notice that's the same as y. 2y so minus 1y is y. And then leave the last term alone as negative 1. And then you split it in half. Now we get four terms on the left side of the equation. Group factor. So the GCF of the first two terms is 2y. And that leaves you with y plus 1. The GCF of the last two terms, since this is a negative, would be negative 1. And when you factor out the negative, that changes the sign of both of these to be y plus 1. Let's see what looks good because the terms and parentheses are the same, which they should be. So now it's like you're taking out the GCF of y plus 1, they both have. And the other factor, what's left of the first term is 2y, and minus what's left of the second term is 1. And then, we set both of these equal to 0, either y plus 1 equals 0, or 2y minus 1 equals 0. And solve it. 
Here you get y equals negative 1. Here you add the 1 divided by 2, so y equals 1. So that's the solutions for y. And now, once you get y itself for now, let's plug back in our trig function, which was sine x. So sine x, we're looking for where sine of x equals negative 1. And where sine of x would equal 1 half. So let's take a look at sine of x equals negative 1. Well, sine, remember, is the opposite over the adjacent, right? So our opposite of our hypotenuse. So the negative 1 is the same as negative 1 over 1. But do you see anything wrong with that? The opposite one and the hypotenuse is 1. Doesn't make sense, does it? Because the hypotenuse always has to be the longest side of the triangle. So this, if you try to draw it, would be an impossible triangle. And if it's an impossible triangle, what do you think that tells you? Well, what that tells you is that you're probably at one of the four points that, where you can't draw it from a triangle. In this case, where is sine negative 1? Which of these points? Remember, sine is the y coordinate. So the only place the y coordinate is negative 1 is right there. And that's the angle, since we're just looking in the positive direction between 0 and 2 pi, of 3 pi over 2. So one of the solutions for x would be 3 pi over 2. We plug that in for x right there, sine would equal negative 1. Now let's look for sine is 1 half, sine of x equals 1 half. This time, we consider it like the opposite of right hypotenuse. This time that's possible. I thought this can be two in the opposite one. Let's see what would happen. So we're kind of working in reverse here by filling in the sides and then finding angles rather than filling in angles and finding the sides. So H block it has to be positive, right? Um, opposite hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is positive. Or the opposite is only positive in two of the quadrants. Right here. Opposite 1, hypotenuse 2. You can see you can draw down here, the opposite would be negative, or here, but also here in right Here, the opposite would also be positive 1, hypotenuse 2. So those are our two angles. Let's start with the one in the first quadrant, that's the easiest. So as you can see, that's the 30 degree, 30, 60, 90, 20, that's 30 degrees right there. So that would be pi over 6. And this one is also pi over 6, but remember this is pi, which is the same if you multiply by 6 over 6 is 6 pi over 6, so this would be pi over 6 less than 5 pi over 6. So we've got three solutions here. So we we'll run it with the braces, or sometimes I call it the squiggly brackets there. So x would equal, there's the brace. And they could be written in any order, but typically the order they're written is lowest to highest. So pi over 6 is the first one we had. Then 5, 5, or 6, we're going around the circle, and then 3, 5, or 2. So in this case, we have three solutions. Let's see if you plug in 5, or 6, or 5, 5, or 6 for x, sine will equal 1. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Here we've got 2 cosine of x squared minus cosine of x equals 0. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, again let y equal this time the trig function that appears more than once is cosine of x. So this means cosine of x squared, so it'd be 2y squared minus y equals 0. This one's a little easier. It's only implied only two terms. And the first thing you look for in factoring is a GCF once it's equal to 0. GCF here is y. So you factor out the y, you're left with 2y minus 1. And then one of these has to equal 0 in order to multiply by 0. So either y equals 0 or 2y minus 1 equals 0. What you do solve this one gives you add 1 divided by 2, y equals 1 half. And then you can substitute in cosine. So we're looking for where cosine is 0, and where cosine is 1 half. 
So let's start with cosine of zero. Well, if cosine is zero, that's pretty obvious. You can't draw a triangle with an adjacent over i five that's going to be zero. So this is your clue that it's at one or more of the places right on the axis are units or more. Your cosine is the x coordinate. So which of these four points has an x coordinate of zero? Well, right here, that's zero one. Is there anywhere else? One other point right down here, and that's zero and negative one. So here, there's two solutions to that. And we're going between zero and two pi in the positive direction. So right here, this is up at pi over two, so x could equal pi over two. And right here is three pi over two, or three pi over two. Now let's look at where cosine is one half. And remember, cosine, using Sokotoy, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Let's see where the adjacent of the hypotenuse is. One over two. Well, it's positive, so we can look at the first quadrant first. Adjacent one, hypotenuse two. Where else would the adjacent be positive? Well, it would be right over here, right? This point appears the adjacent would be negative one. Here, here, one over two. So let's start with the first quadrant with that angle. Well, you can see that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but this time, the root three would be under, that's the 60 degree angle, which is pi over three. So one of our solutions would be x equals pi over three. And then to figure out this one, well, this is zero. It's also two pi, which you can multiply by three over three, the same as six pi over three. And since that's six pi over three, then this would be pi over three less than it. That would be five pi over three. So this time we've got three solutions. And if you go, it doesn't have to be, but if you go from lowest to highest in your unit circle, the first one we did is pi over 30. And then the next one we did is pi over 2. Then 3 pi over 2. And then 5 pi over 3. Let's look at some more like these. It says find out all solutions for each equation from 0 to 2. Now notice these two are a little bit different. This one, we're not going to need another letter here because the cosecant only shows up one time. So there's no need to set y to it. Oh, you could. The easiest here, if it just shows up one time, just isolate it. So remember this is cosecant x squared is what that one means. And if you add the 4, let's say you get that. And then to get rid of the square, your next step would be to take the square root of both sides of the equation. If you go secant x, remember to take the square root of both sides, you need plus or minus, and square root of 4 is 2. So we're looking for where cosecant is plus or minus 2. And this is not a fraction, you can just put it over 1. And then just recall. Because secant is a reciprocal of which trig function? It's a reciprocal of sine. So sine is the opposite of hypotenuse, so cosecant would be hypotenuse over the opposite. So let's look at where that would occur there. Well, we know the hypotenuse on this is never negative, so it's got to come from the opposite being negative, but it can also be positive. So when it's plus or minus like this, let's start with positive two. Well, the opposite's positive in the first quadrant here. One, minus two, and the second quadrant. One, two. But the negative, it could also be negative two. So the opposite could also be a negative one. So here would be negative one, opposite two, negative one, two. You don't have to draw this to scale, I just try to draw this roughly to scale so it's easier to see what the angle is. This is where you have, you just have to have those 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles that run. So you can see, okay, well that's 30 degrees, right? Which is pi over six. And since this is pi, this is the same as six pi over six. This is 2 pi, multiplied by 6 over 6, the same as 12 pi over 6. So 
that means this would be pi over 6 less than that. I'll give you 5 pi over 6. This would be pi over 6 more than 6 pi over 6, which would be 7 pi over 6. And this would be pi over 6 less than 12 pi over 6, which would be 11 pi over 6. So those would be your four solutions. Let's take a look at the next one here. This one's one of the trickier ones, but um, you want to make sure you can handle it because we've got two different types of trig functions. That's one thing. And the other thing that makes it a little difficult is we've got a 2x in it instead of just x. So, say y equal to sine or y equal to cosine doesn't really help here because it's not the same trig function. So that really wouldn't make it simple. We'd have to use two different other variables. And the 2x, let's see how we handle that first of all. Okay. Well, we know we're looking for where x is between 0 and 2 positive. Well, if you multiply these all by 2, 2 times 0 is still 0, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. So that shows us since we've got 2x in there, we're actually going to be looking for angles between 0 and 4 pi. In other words, twice around the unit circle. So that's one feature. And when you have a function like this with sine and cosine, there's different ways to handle it, but probably the easiest way is to just move one of them over to the other side. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to subtract the uh, cosine, 2x over on the right side. And then, I turn around, well, all these other ones have only had one trig function, right? So how can we get this equation to have one trig function only instead of two different trig functions? And the way to accomplish that is to know your trig identity. And then you'll realize that the most advantageous thing to do is to divide by cosine of 2x. Well, why would that be helpful? Well, sine of 2x divided by cosine of 2x, remember, it is sine over cosine, it's tangent, so that's tangent of 2x. And look at what happens on this side, the cosine is reduced out, they do just negative 1. So now we're looking for where tangent is equal to negative 1, or negative 1 And then just remember, Sokotoa, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Let's see if that could be negative 1. So this is okay, positive 0. Well, opposite is negative 1 adjacent thing. So that's not the first quadrant here. Opposite. Now notice either one of these could be negative in order to make it negative 1, right? So here the adjacent is negative 1. Opposite one, so that would be negative 1, so that would work. Here, you might think about this quadrant, but here they'd both be negative, which would actually cancel out making it positive in the third quadrant. But in the fourth quadrant, this would be positive 1 x quadrant and negative 1. So those are our two triangles where we have a tangent equal to negative 1. So, Let's start just go with notice. We're going to have to go between 0 and 4 pi eventually. But what we're solving for initially, since what's inside trig functions is 2x, is what 2x could be. So 2x could equal, well, that's the same way. This is a 45 degree angle, which is pi over 4. This is pi, which if we multiply by 4 over 4, is the same as 4 pi over 4. So this would be pi over 4 less than it. So 3 pi over 4 is one possibility. And over here is 2 pi, which if you multiply by 4, pi over 4 is the same as 8 pi over 4. This is pi over 4 less than it, since we're going in the positive direction here. So that would be 7 pi over 4. But that's only going one time around the unit circle. Remember, because of the 2x, 2x can actually go between 0 and 4 twice around. So once you go one time around, the easiest way to go another time around is just add 2 pi. Remember, 2 pi is the same as 8 pi over 4. So if you go one more, that way you get a coterminal angle in the same place. So if you add 8 pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, you get 11 pi over 4. And if you add 8 pi over 4, and that'll take us back here again, if you add 8 pi over 4 to 7 pi over 4, you get 15 pi over 4. But we're not quite done. These are the things that 2x could equal. Right? All the angles would make that equal to negative 1. But we're not solving for 2x, we're solving for x. So the final step is to divide by 2. You divide that by 2, you divide all these by 2. 
since they're already fractions, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half the reciprocal. Okay. So that'd be 3 pi when you multiply by 1 half is 3 pi over 8. X. 7 pi over 8. 11 pi over 8. And 15 pi over 8. So even though we looked between 0 and 4 pi for 2x, take a look at our final answers. Remember, x still has to be between 0 and 2 pi. And if you look, all these angles are between 0 and 2 pi. Because 15 pi over 8, that's a little bit less than 2 pi. Because 2 pi would be 16 pi over 8. So our final answers end up being between 0 and 2 pi when we look for 2x being between 0 and 4 pi. That's how that works. All right, so we have a few more examples here. This time, though, it's not always going to be where x is between 0 and 2 pi. It might be more restricted. Here, we're only looking for where x is between 0 and pi, so halfway around the answer. Here's one, again, where we have a trig function that appears twice. So let's let y equal secant of x. Make it easier to solve. We'll solve y squared plus 3y equals negative 2. And then before we factor, get it equal to 0. Otherwise, factoring doesn't really help. So add the 2. And this one's a little easier to find factors of 2 that add to be 3 would be 2 and 1. Here you can use the shortcut because it just has a 1 as the leading coefficient. So it'd be factored to y plus 1 and y plus 2. All right. So set these equal to 0. Either y plus 1 equals 0 or y plus 2 equals 0, or it will probably be 0. We solve this one, we get y equals negative 1, and here we get y equals negative 2. We're not done, because remember, y is the same as secant of x. We want to really want to know where secant of x equals negative 1, and where secant of x equals negative 2. Well, let's start with negative 1. Well, secant, you have to remember, is the reciprocal of cosine. So what I might do on these, to make it easier on yourself, they just say, well, if secant is negative 1, cosine would be its reciprocal, but the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. So we're really looking for where cosine is negative 1. And here secant is negative 2, so that means we're looking for where cosine is the reciprocal. That is like over 1 would be negative 1 now. That's one way to do it. Or you can just flip the sides like we did back in the cosecant problem and say it's the hypotenuse over the opposite. Either way. So if cosine is negative one. Well, you can't draw a triangle where the adjacent and the hypotenuse are the same. So where is cosine negative one? Cosine is the x coordinate. So that's one of these four points here. The x coordinate is negative one right there. And we are looking between zero and pi, so that does hit right at pi. So x would equal pi. Now let's take a look at where cosine is negative one half. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So where the adjacent is negative one, be right here. This is two. See that's a sixty degree angle, which is a pi over three, and this is three pi over three. So that would be pi over 3 less than it, which would be 2 pi over 3. Now normally I'd draw another triangle right down here. Negative 1 over 2, that would also give you a cosine of negative 1 half. Why do you think I'm not drawing that? Well, because we're only looking halfway around the unit circle. 0 to pi, so down here would be past pi, so that one is not included in what we're looking for. So we just have two solutions here. 2 pi over 3, and pi. Let's look at another one here. Okay. Again, we've got the same trig function twice, so these are the ones where it's probably easiest if you let a letter like y equal this trig function. So this is 2y squared plus y equals 0. This one's already equal to 0, so we can factor it right away. 
factor out the y leaves you with 2y plus 1. So either y would equal 0 or 2y plus 1 would equal 0. You solve this one, you get y equals negative 1. So we're looking for where sine of x equals 0 and where sine of x equals negative 1 half. Well, you can't draw a triangle of 0, right? So it's got to be one or more of the four points here. We're only looking between 0 and pi here. So sine is 0, sine is the y coordinate. So 1, 0, that would work. And there's another place, actually. Negative 1, 0 would also work. And those angles are 0 and pi. So here's 0 and pi. Both on that now, I'm not going to include 2 pi, even though 2 pi would be in the same place because we're only going between 0 and pi. And where is sine negative 1 half? Well, sine, remember, is the opposite over hypotenuse. Let's try to draw that. Well, the opposite to be negative 1 would have to be down here, right? And that's the problem, or down here. Those are not between 0 and pi. So we're looking for where sine is negative 1 half, but the only place negative 1 half is outside of our interval, so this one doesn't give us any answers that are in the interval we're looking for. Those are all past pi. So because of that, we only have two solutions here, 0 and pi. All right, let's take a look at a couple more of these. Notice on this one, we've got 3x inside there, kind of like we saw before. So whenever you see that, first modify your interval. Since x is between 0 and pi, multiply them all by 3. Since we've got 3x, well, that's still 0. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times pi is 3 pi. So on this one, we're going to end up looking from 0 to 3 pi, in other words, 1 and a half times around the unit circle. We don't have to use y here. You can, but there's only one trig function, so it's not really that helpful. Just try to isolate the trig function here. Try to get that cosine of 3x by itself. So the first thing you can do to get it by itself is add the root 2. And then you can divide by 2. Okay, there's a couple things a little tricky about this. One, well cosine is the adjacent of our hypotenuse, but this may not look like one of the special triangle that has a root 2 and a 2 in it. So you have to realize this is the simplified form of 1 over root 2. If you multiply by root 2 over root 2, you get root 2 over 2. And that's the form that's easier to work with. And that's the percentage of the adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 1. Jason's one right here, hypotenuse root two, and also right down there. Jason one, hypotenuse root two. So let's first go around one time, or actually about one and a half times. So the difference here though is 3x inside. So 3x, which inside the tree pressure, could equal, well this is our 45, 45, 90 triangle, so that's 45 degrees, which is pi over four. And this is 2 pi, which if you multiply by 4 over 4, is the same as 8 pi over 4. So this would be pi over 4 less than it. That would be 7 pi over 4. That's one time around. But we're going between 0 and 3 pi. And 3 pi is over here. Because this is 2 pi, and one more pi over 3 pi. So when we go from 2 pi to 3 pi, we hit this angle again which is just means you're going one more time around the unit circle, which is 2 pi. So add 2 pi, which is 8 pi over 4, to pi over 4 it gives you 9 pi over 4. However, we do not hit this one again. If we went to 0 to 4 pi, we would hit this one again, but we're stopping at 3 pi, so this one we only hit once. But remember, those are not your final answers. Last step. 
We're not solving for 3x, we're solving for x. Divide by 3, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal one third. So you get x equals, so you just divide by 3, multiply by one third, that's pi over 12. 7 pi over 12. But this one reduces, 3 goes into 9, 3 times, so that's 3 pi over 12. Notice again, even though we looked between 0 and 3 pi, all of these are less than pi. Our final answers are still between 0 and pi. Let's look at one more of these. Again, there's no need to use y here because there's just one trig function. So I'm just going to add the 3 over first. And remember that squared is the whole tangent there is squared. And since it's got a 2x there, not just an x, let's modify our rule. We're looking between 0 and pi, but if you multiply them by 2, that's still 0. I do 2x. So 2x means, since x can be between 0 and pi, 2x can actually be between 0 and 2 pi. So we will look one time around the inner circle. And then just take the square root of both sides. Get rid of the squared. So we get the tangent of 2x equals, you know, we're taking the square of both sides, you get plus or minus, so plus or minus square root. Which is like plus or minus square root of 3 over 1, and tangent is the opposite of the adjacent. So when you have plus or minus, and it's one of the most high triangles in a row, we get all four quadrants. So, opposite root 3, adjacent 1, Opposite root 3, adjacent negative 1, that would be a negative. Opposite negative root 3, adjacent negative 1, that would be positive. And opposite negative root 3, adjacent 1. Okay. So let's look at our angles here. Remember, this is 2x that's inside there. So 2x, are we looking between 0 and 2, 5? So one time around, be circle. Well, this is, you can see, this is the um, 30, 69 triangle, and this is the opposite of the root 3, it's the 60 degree angle, which is pi over 3. This is pi, which if you multiply by 3 over 3, you get a common denominator, which would be the same as 3 pi over 3. So this is pi over 3 less than it, which is 2 pi over 3. This is pi over 3 more than it, 3 pi over 3, so that would be 4 pi over 3. And this is 2 pi, which is the same if you multiply by 3 over 3, and it's 6 pi over 3. So this is pi over 3 less than it, 5 pi over 3. So that's going one time around the unit circle. So we're going between 0 and 2 pi. But again, that's, those are not our final answers. Those are what 2x could equal. Final step divided by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So our final answers are x equals pi over 3 times a half, which is pi over 6. 2 pi over 3 times a half, the 2 is reduced out. You do pi over 3. 2 goes into 4 twice, so you get 2 pi over 3 and 5 times 6. Again, notice even though we look between 0 and 2 pi, our final answers are all between 0 and pi. And that concludes the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of trigonometry.